I want you guys to grade the Cowboys offseason so far. The Cowboys say they're not done, but I don't know if I believe that. I'm going to break down all the moves, give out my own grade at the end of today's video, but I want to hear from you guys first. Grade the Cowboys offseason so far. A, B, C, D, or F. You're watching the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and we're doing our off-season tracker and grades, breaking down everything that happened for the Cowboys this off-season. And it wasn't that much. Uh, they were very quiet once again in free agency, and for the most part, appear to be adopting a run-it-back mentality of we'll keep most of our core together, keep our flexibility available beyond that, and then make some moves maybe more next year. And in general, the Cowboys have always leaned on their draft classes to kind of carry their off seasons. And this year's class was a little bit more controversial. But one thing that we kind of celebrated and then moved on from pretty quickly was the retention of Dan Quinn as the Cowboys defensive coordinator. He had at least interest, if not offers from uh, from certain franchises to be their head coach. But Dan Quinn is back, as is pretty much the entire Cowboys coaching staff. McCarthy, Moore, Fossil, Brian Schottenheimer gets to play the uh, prep advanced role, so that's not too video, but I wanted to mention it. Joe Philbin's back, Nussmeyer, Skip Pete, Lunda Wells. Robert Prince is the only noteworthy change on the coaching staff. He's the new wide receivers coach. Joe Witt had defensive coordinator interest. He also sticks around with Aiden Dirty, Scott McClurley, Al Harris, George Edwards, and Rob Davis, Jeff Blasco, Leon Lett, and some other assistant coaches that I'm sure not too many people care about. But in the end, I would argue that keeping Dan Quinn was your best off-season move. And when your best off-season move is keeping your defensive coordinator, I'm not sure your off-season was that great. Although, imagine our concern about this Cowboys team if they hadn't found a way to keep Dan Quinn in the fold. Some roster move reaction and breakdown and recaps, all that stuff, coming up next. But first, I have a question for you. Did the Cowboys get better this year? Or did they get worse? Y for yes, they got better. N for no, they actually got worse. Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Normally, we'd spend a lot of time on the free agency additions. Uh, not this year. The Cowboys signed three players spending barely $5 million on all three. Dante Fowler, one year, $3 million. James Washington, under 1.2, mostly guaranteed. And Ryan Nall, with like no guarantees on the vet minimum. We'll start with Fowler, since no one cares that much about Ryan Nall, who I only know is going to make the roster. Fowler, it depends on which one we get, right? 2017 Jags, Fowler, eight sacks. 2019 Rams, Fowler, 11.5. In the rest of his career, in four years, 15.5 total. So I don't know which Dante Fowler the Cowboys will get at his cost with not that much guaranteed money. It's a good pickup. I like the James Washington one as well. Now, he fell out of favor as the Steelers had a quarterback who physically couldn't throw the football that well downfield as he continued to age in Big Ben. The 2019 production is probably not what you're going to get. Can you get somewhere between 19 and 20? Even if you get the 20 production, 2020 production, you're paying him nothing. That's just fine for me. So of the three Cowboys free agency moves, all three of them, which one was the best signing? DF for Dante Fowler, RN for Ryan Nall, or JW for James Washington. If the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know which one you thought was the best outside free agent signing. The Cowboys' biggest moves in the end, like the positive ones, came in re-signing players. Dorrance Armstrong, a two-year, $14.04 million deal. I will make note for Armstrong, that deal is backloaded, and they can get out of it after a year and not actually pay him that much money. I am once again going to continue the Dorrance Armstrong breakout in 2022 campaign, the second breakout. His numbers in 2021 were better than his career numbers before that. He had his best season ever. 
Now, he was not as good as Randy Gregory. Do not believe the Cowboys' Kool-Aid lies. But he was a lot better than what he's ever been in his NFL career. And I'm hoping we get a second breakout this year. Speaking of breakouts, that was J. Ron Curse. Two years, $10 million. Cowboys lowballed him. It got a little bit ugly. Unlike the Randy Gregory contract negotiation, the Cowboys saved that one, and they were able to retain J. Ron Curse on a very team-friendly deal. I love that pickup. And $3 million for a punter? It's fine in Brian Anger. And he was awesome, of course, last year. We'll get to the rookie class later on, but... The Cowboys' Tyler Smith jerseys are available at chatsports.com slash Tyler Smith jersey. Check the comment section. I said, what do you think the URL would be, right? Check the comment section and the description. That link will be in there to get your first round rookie jersey today. The other re signings here, very cheap. All these guys are mostly cuttable. LVE, by the way, I know not everyone likes him, but a one year, $2 million deal for Van Der Esch is actually a really good move. Carlos Watkins, one year, $1.9 million. That's just fine. Luke Gifford, with almost no guaranteed at a cheaper cost than his RFA tender, that certainly makes sense. So the Cowboys are in good shape with those particular moves. Overall, I, I like the individual re signings. It's the totality of how that pre draft process went isn't quite the same now if you want the best cowboys coverage on youtube you guys have come to the right spot free daily videos on the cowboys report if you haven't already click that big red button and join us for our live shows and our daily videos as well the cowboys did lose some notable players randy gregory a five-year 70 million dollar deal a disastrous process by the way even if you didn't want to pay Randy, the Cowboys thought they had him. There was some confusion, manipulation, disagreement, whatever word you want to throw in there. Over the contract language, he signs the exact same deal with Denver. You'll lose him. Said Wilson and Connor Williams go to Miami. Not everyone thinks those are losses, by the way. Lyle Collins gets cut. The Cowboys couldn't trade him. Wasn't a huge surprise compared to Amari Cooper, for example. He's gone. Greg Zerline, that one is not a loss. Uh, he goes to the Jets. That was like a, oh, no, anyway, type of loss. Two safeties leave for very cheap, by the way. Keanu Neal and DeMonte Casey gone. Cheap one-year deals. Those cheap contracts, this, this slide of four is basically, yeah, we didn't want them anymore. And Malik Turner, who I am... I am a bit disappointed to lose him. I think he's a good football player. He goes to the Niners on basically the one-year vet men deal. Perhaps the biggest loss was the Amari Cooper trade. After the Cowboys spent weeks bordering on months talking about how, oh, Amari doesn't do this the way we wanted to, they went, oh, shit, we could try to trade him. And by the time they shopped him, they had tanked his value, etc. There was not that much interest. They had messed everything up. They did not handle the Amari Cooper trade process properly you leak that you're, you're, you're going to keep him not well we're going to cut him if we don't trade for him that hurts your value and your leverage points in the end a fifth and a pick round six round pick swap from the browns is all the cowboys got for amari cooper now for those free agency losses here are the projected comp picks the cowboys will get by the way these are projected it is going to be influenced by playing time production etc the cowboys got a fourth for, or could get a fourth for Randy Gregory and six for Connor Williams and Cedric Wilson. Not great, but also maybe not what you were hoping for in the end. My free agency grade has not changed, by the way, since I did the initial free agency grades video. It is still a C for me. The individual moves of keeping Curse and, and keeping Van Der Esch and signing Dante Fowler and James Washington, those were good moves. But the bigger picture of we spent $5.3 million in free agency on outside players. Seriously? You think your team is good enough to only spend 5.3 ish million bucks? You have to do more. You don't have to go recklessly commanders spending in free agency or even full fledged Rams FM picks mindset. But not doing anything hasn't worked for you. It is bordering on the definition of insanity, and that does 
bother me from the Cowboys' perspective. Now, there are still some players unsigned that aren't going to move the needle. Blake Jarwin's hip is messed up. That one hurts. Not that much dead money, at least. Brent Urban, you kind of replaced him with John Ridgeway. Ty Insecki replaced by Matt. Well, let's go Corey Clement. Well, you got Rico Dowdle for that role, and they did not tender Francis Bernard, and no one's shown interest on that front. Let's go to the draft now. Quick recap, and just some mentions here. Tyler Smith, who, for the most part, we were like, yeah, we don't want him in round one. And the Cowboys took him in round one, and some people didn't like that, understandably so. We talked a lot about Sam Williams, who wanted to go by D and is now wants to go by Sam again, so we're back to snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. I like that pick. I think he's got great upside. I love the Jalen Tolbert selection. Everything else I'm fine with from either it was fine to it was an outright good pick. Jake Ferguson, Matt Willetsko, Deron Bland, Damone Clark could be a steal if he's healthy coming off of, of a, the, basically the, the, the Leighton Van Der Esch injury uh, that he had a few years ago. Love John Ridgeway. No complaints about Devin Harper uh, either. I did not love this draft class because I do all my research and my, my studying in advance. I have, I have my rankings. So I'm not going to adjust those just to be a homer. That's not fair to everyone else and every other team that I cover here at Chat Sports. But I do want to hear before I get to my grade who your favorite Cowboys draft pick was. Mine's Jalen Tolbert. I love that one. I had a very high grade in relative to where he got drafted. If Damone Clark's healthy, probably more so next year, that one could be the winner as well. Let me hear from you guys. Favorite Cowboys draft pick. If you watched our draft grades video here at the Cowboys Report, which I hope you all did, then you know what grade I gave the Cowboys draft class. It was a C+. It was not a disaster. I thought day two was really good, and day three had some nice selections, but it was not quite the same level of that 2020 excitement I had when, swear to God, the Cowboys drafted off of my big board. They took almost my highest graded player like three or four different times. I, I've never seen it happen quite like that for any one team. Not bad, but, you know, we didn't want, for the most part, Smith entering the draft. Maybe the Cowboys are right. Hope they are. He's got immense upside, after all. What I did love was the undrafted free agency crop. Marquise Bell had a fifth round grade on him. Big Cat Bryant, elite name. They brought in Malik Davis pre-draft, so no surprise there. Several interesting receivers, including Dontari Drummond and Ty Freifogel out of Indiana as well. Jonathan Garibe, I think, is going to win your job at kicker, and I think he will be an upgrade over Greg Zerline almost instantly, in part because he's super cheap. Aaron Hansford, I like him a lot. He might make this team Maybe even over Devin Harper. Peyton Hendershot is a good track record of UDFA tight ends on this team. Don't sleep on Story Jackson either. Alex Lindstrom has some, Alex Lindstrom has some fans as well in terms of maybe making the roster. I don't think he's going to beat Biotish quite yet, though. Aaron Champlin from Harvard is a fun name, too. Isaac Taylor Stewart is the other name I want to mention at cornerback out of USC. That's a fun name to monitor. He's a good football player. I was a bit surprised he didn't get drafted. Same with Wanye Thomas. That is a special teams impact player. A deeper draft overall results in one of the deepest UDFAs classes in a long time, numbers-wise, for the Cowboys. I love this undrafted free agency class. Doesn't mean they're going to be the next Tony Romo or James Harrison or whatever, but I do think it was a good offseason season from the Dallas Cowboys in terms of the undrafted free agency pickup. Overall in the offseason, meh. I I'm very mad about it. The lack of aggression from this team is a disappointment because they have a franchise QB. They won 12 games last year. The NFC is not that good. And the question of, did the Cowboys get better? I don't know if they did. I really don't. I kind of think that they're kind of the same-ish, and it almost feels like this team was like, you know what? Little mini reset this year, and we'll go all in 2023 for whoever our head coach ends up being. So if you didn't answer this question at the start of today's show, make sure you do it right now. Grade the Cowboys offseason. A, B, C, D, or F.